Welcome back to Autism at Home, brought to you by us at Early Autism Project Malaysia through our non-profit initiative, The Hope Project. My name is Josheved Isaacs, and it's great to see you again. So far in this play series, we have talked about what interactive play is and why it's so important for children. Today, we will introduce you to toy play. Now, toy play is perhaps a type of play we are most familiar with. Think about birthdays, Christmas, Santa, and how underneath all that wrapping paper is a much coveted toy. Now, toys are versatile and can include teddy bears, cooking sets, train tracks and cars, blocks and puzzles, to name a few. Because toys are so versatile, the skills they develop are also versatile. Some toys teach children to problem solve, like figuring out which pieces go where when building a jigsaw puzzle. Some toys require manipulation of very small parts and objects, like putting a shoe on a Barbie doll. This is really great for building fine motor skills. Toy play also teaches a child many different things and ways they can play, which sets the stage for a later type of play, independent play. You can begin toy play as early as one month old, as long as the toys are safe and appropriate to your child's age. Toys for babies and children typically come with age recommendations. This is not just because certain toys are unsafe for younger children, but toys for that age may be designed to develop skills appropriate to that age. If your child has received a professional assessment, you might know that their chronological age does not match with their developmental age. For example, a child may be five years old, but have the developmental age of a two-year-old. Hence, a toy designed for a five-year-old may not be suitable to their current skill set. Not only can the toy be too complex for them, it can also contain parts that are unsafe for their level of understanding. For example, they might still have risk of putting small objects in their mouth or nose the way a two or one year old might have. So do keep this in mind as we go through a few recommended toys for each developmental age. For a young infant from birth and within their first year, this is the age they're discovering what they can do with their body. Toys they can reach for, listen to and look at are great options, such as rattles, soft toys or musical rotating cradle toys. Once they begin to crawl and move around, they also start to understand their name, common words and find hidden objects. They can start to explore plastic balls, puppets, nesting toys, soft blocks and push-pull toys. By one year old, good luck keeping up with them. They're starting to walk and suddenly the world of possibilities around them are even greater. Board books, child safe crayons and markers and knob puzzles are just a few ideas. Two year olds only get more active as they start to get more physical. They're now able to play with more complex toys like wooden puzzles, pretend building sets, finger painting and picture books. Between three to six years old, language and social skills have developed enough for children to do more complex imaginary style plays with their toys as well as play with other children. They can now do jigsaw puzzles with more than 20 pieces, create cities and buildings out of blocks, use a wider variety of arts and crafts tools like child scissors and chalk, and of course look at picture books with more words and detailed pictures. Whichever toys you get for your child, make sure to check that they are well made. Any paint is non-toxic, lead-free, and to avoid toys with small parts for children under three. Buying the right toys for a child is only the first step. It's important not to assume a child with autism automatically knows how to play with the toy just because it's in front of them. If they find imitation challenging, they may also not be able to learn by just watching someone else play with it. In fact, more commonly, we might see our children either not playing the toys at all 
or playing with it inappropriately. For example, throwing a hard toy car into the air to hear it bang against something else. The child may still need to be taught how to play with the toy, applying the same three key strategies of ABA. Break skills down, practice and reinforce. Let's see a few examples of how this would look. Ball play. To you and me, there are many ways we can play with a ball. You can throw it, kick it, roll it, use it in football, basketball and station games. A child with autism who does not know how to play in these many ways can be taught how to, one by one. Start with actions that are easiest for them to do, like roll the ball, throw it, then only kick it. You can add in additional challenges like rolling, throwing or kicking it into a box. Then you could teach simple games like football with a child-sized football net or basketball net. How about a shape sorter? Shape sorters, just like jigsaw puzzles, come in a variety of levels and complexities. There are shape sorters with holes on only one side. Then there are even shape sorters with holes on every side. Start with the simplest shape sorter and start with a single shape. You might even have to temporarily block the other holes to help your child focus on the correct hole first. Then, build up the skill, one shape at a time. You can even break a more open-ended toy, like Legos and blocks, into steps. There are a million different things you could build with Legos, but it can be too demanding to expect your child with autism to come up with those ideas themselves. Break it down for them by creating some pictures of block combinations they can copy and create, starting from pictures with the least blocks. There are even children's blocks out there that come with page-by-page -page manuals of what they can build with the blocks they have. Whichever toy you break down, be sure to practice each step enough times for your child to confidently do it without prompting from the adult. And of course, remember to reinforce them. Don't assume that just because we're teaching them how to play a toy, that it means that it should be reinforcing in itself for them. Children are also more likely to play toys when they are organized into stations around the home. Have a go setting up toy stations around the house, like the arts and crafts corner, or the book corner, or a trains and cars corner. This also will be easier to encourage independent play and is also easier to clean up. Now, so far, these suggestions we've been talking about are quite a natural approach to teaching toy play. However, because autism is a spectrum, some children will require a much more structured, systematic way of teaching toy play. Here are some helpful tips for a much, much, much more structured approach to teaching. First, set your child up for success. When teaching, ensure the environment is as distraction-free as possible. Probably not like this. Some options include placing toys in toy boxes so that a child can see the boxes but not gain immediate access and really just keep away other distracting items. This helps the child to focus on the toy activity we want to teach them. Secondly, select a toy they would be most interested in. For example, children with a younger developmental age tend to find cause and effect toys much more interesting. Thirdly, teach your child in a structured setting. For example, the table is a structured setting as it's usually free of distractions and allows a child to focus on one thing at a time. Fourth, Ensure you've got good, strong reinforcement on standby. And finally, start easy with a very short expectation. Let's look at a simple example of a cause and effect toy with buttons. In this example, the child is playing the toy together with the adult, but the adult is also rewarding the child for playing appropriately with the toy. <gasps> doing, doing. I love how you're playing so nicely. Let's have snow together. Ready, set, go! Here is another example of teaching a four to six piece puzzle where the adult starts with only two pieces out. Okay, 
do puzzle. Well done doing your puzzles. I've got pasta. Scoop, scoop, scoop. When the child is confident, the adult can move on to four pieces, six pieces, and so on. Pop quiz. Which of the below are long-term benefits of toy play? It develops hobbies and interests, gross and fine motor skills, builds independent play skills, or all of the above? The answer is D, all of the above. Toy play, as you can see, is highly beneficial. Which of the below is not a toy play? Building train tracks, peekaboo, finger paint set, or a rat bill? The closest answer is B, peekaboo. However, toys you have around the home can easily become other kinds of play depending on how you use them. For example, using a hand puppet, which is a toy, to sing songs with your child turns it into an interactive play. Ezra's mother wants to teach him how to do jigsaw puzzles. She puts all 12 pieces out on the table. She makes sure to use his strongest reinforcement and also practices every day. But Ezra still can't finish the 12 piece puzzle. Why? Ezra is not interested in the puzzle. The puzzle picture is not colorful enough. The reinforcement should be stronger or there are too many pieces. It is possible that most likely the answer is that there are too many pieces. D. Ezra's mom has got the practice and the reinforcement, but maybe starting with too many pieces. She can either try simpler puzzles like knot puzzles or lesser pieces, or use the same 12 piece puzzle but put only two pieces, then four pieces out. So now it's your turn. If your child does not already play with a wide variety of toys, Select one toy you would like them to learn. Examine it. And then ask yourself how you can break playing that toy into steps. Feel free to check out our Toy Play Ideas list in our corresponding Autism at Home article, which gives toy idea recommendations based on a child's developmental age. And of course, whichever toy you choose, please don't forget to keep reinforcement and practice high. So that's it on Toy Play. In the next lesson, we introduce you to a type of play many children with autism in particular love. Sensory play. Think Play-Doh, slime, water play. Anything that allows them to get down and messy is a general crowd pleaser. If you haven't already, do check out our free online resource platform Autism at Home, which has all the corresponding articles and necessary downloadables for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook to stay updated. Thank you for watching and we will see you soon.